Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. It is Sunday, June the 10th, 2018, and last night it was hot as hell at the NYC Arena as House of Glory turned up the heat with temperature rising, and we are here, like we always do, to bring the hammer down on the evening's events on the newest fastest rising podcast in all of youtube baby and the only youtube channel where you will get your house of glory reviews and your house of glory fix sledge hammer tv's own the sledge hammer wrestling show let's uh, do it shall we <laughs> Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. I am not the Ultimo Dragon. Along with me, as always, is the world's greatest tag team of Thor, the wrestling god of Thunder, the official sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, and my little buddy, and most trusted companion in the whole entire world, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in the entire universe, Blue the Snowball. Thank you guys for checking out Sledgehammer TV's official review of temperature rising my god did i have a fantastic time i will go on record right now as to say it is one of my favorite wrestling nights that i have ever taken part in in my whole entire life that covers 40 years of professional wrestling fandom i have been to wrestlemanias i have been to survivor series and SummerSlam. i have been to hall of fame ceremonies i have been to in ecw i have been to house of glory all year long, as they continually put out top quality show after top quality show, and this one, by far, was my favorite. Maybe it was because I got to go down Legends Row and meet a bunch of people who are absolutely special to me and mean something to me in my childhood, mostly, and not the least of which, was the tag team Demolition. They had the WWF World Tag Team Championship belts on hand with them, and it was draped across this shoulder for the picture that we took together. What a fantastic night. If you are a wrestling fan, there are things like this going on where you're at. If you're not in New York and you are not privileged enough and lucky enough to take part in a House of Glory event, there are House of Glory-like places somewhere in and around where you're sitting. Check them out because you are missing out on top quality stuff, man. Absolutely unbelievable night. Another in a long line of home runs so far for House of Glory. And we all know how much I absolutely love my House of Glory, right? But that does not mean that this hammer will not come down on this company. You guys are not exempt because it is my job to critique you. That is what reviewing this show is all about. And we had fantastic action throughout the night. We had great meet and greets. All of that was fantastic. And the one thing that I am going to come down on you guys, you may even know it's coming. Some of you guys might want to bring the hammer down on it yourself, some of you guys on the roster. Because although I definitely enjoyed the new presentation, it looked fucking awesome the way you had it set up for the wrestlers' entrances to come off the stage at the NYC Arena. I appreciated that. I loved the new little setup for the announce team. I uh, I understand what you were trying to accomplish. And poss this might possibly be coming from a place of it's just not what I'm familiar with. And it's not what I'm accustomed to. It's not what I'm comfortable in. Because you go in as a fan, you know what the setup's supposed to be. And you guys changed up the arena setup. Now, like I said, aesthetically, looked fantastic. But functionality-wise, one, I would change it. I would change it. Not just because it was not very stable. 
And uh, that's not a shot at the craftsmanship. It's just these this platform that you guys constructed is meant to house 300-pound bodies, sometimes two or three at a time. I think it should have been a little bit wider than three feet. You know, it, it looked uncomfortable. The wrestlers didn't look comfortable coming down it. It made for a minimal interactivity between wrestler and fan coming to the ring and in and around the ring. One of the things I felt like, and this is a terrible analogy, but I'm going to use it, is if you could equate it to going to the Bronx Zoo right here in New York in the Bronx, the biggest zoo probably maybe in America. I don't know. I might be overselling that. Versus going to the Queen Zoo in Flushing, where you can get a little closer to the animals. You could go to the petting zoo and actually feed the animals. That's what House of Glory felt like for wrestling to me. Not that you guys are animals, but I could get up close and feel the action. Whereas this time, I felt as if I was so far away that I, I was not watching it the way I'm used to. I felt taken out of the action. I did not feel as intimate as, as it usually does. I enjoy being that close to the guys, as do most people that attend independent shows such as this. We know the risk that is involved. I can appreciate if you're trying to give the performers a little bit more space to work, like we see Private Party and the guys liking to do off the top ropes and springboarding to the outside, and you want to give this, the performers an adequate space so that they don't hurt themselves. I understand all of that and, and can appreciate it, but you took away a lot from my side of the barricade by making this change. None the least of which is the camera guys, which although I was in what would you what you would think was a prime seat, I was in the front row seat right next to the aisle where the uh, wrestlers come down to enter the ring, you would think that would be prime seating, which it usually is, but I had uh, had some camera guys a lot more in my view than I saw some wrestling. So, you know, if we're being fair, which I am, and I bring the truth, I don't hold back, those are some of my criticisms, and it really only comes from around the setup. I, I did not like it. I feel like you took some seating away Possibly it just didn't feel intimate enough. I my suggestion to you guys is if it is absolutely necessary for you to come off the stage Do away with that full platform that runs all the way to the ring. It's doing nobody any good. It's not It's not helping and If I may be so bold as to offer you a solution Make it a ramp give it an incline possibly maybe a six to eight foot incline from the top of the stage all the way down, make it less inclined if you need to, so that you could, you know, make the the uh, wrestlers comfortable going down. It will be more stable. It will be more functional. They will get down to the floor before they reach the fans, so they can actually interact, give us high fives and hugs like we used to get when they were trying to do this off the ramp. You see the ramp wobbling. You see the wrestler wobbling. It, it didn't look good, and it didn't look that safe, and I, I would definitely do away with it. I, if you want to keep the same setup, like I said, try a ramp. Or why not, you know, you got the stairs. You you guys finally made the stairs for the ring, and now you did this so that they don't need to use them? I, I don't know. But that's just me. That's just me, and I'm not going to be petty and go on and on and on about it. That was my only complaint, which I never usually have any. Never, ever usually have any. As far as the show goes, we are going to get into the show right now. Forgive me. I mean, if you don't like my criticisms, you know, that that's up to you. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Those are my opinions on the changes that you guys made. Feel free to do what you wish. Of course, it's your company, but that's just, uh, that's just one fan's point of view coming at you, looking at it from a professional and business-like uh, mind frame. And... Um, Hopefully we see just some sort of an improvement because I, I don't think it re worked well for anybody at all. But let's get to talking about the show. Temperature rising on June the 9th. Last night was fucking awesome. Last night's action was fantastic from start to finish. There wasn't a sleeper match. We had every single match get the crowd hype and involved. Every performer that went out there last night did so with the intention to steal the show. I think everybody was definitely on their A game, or at least was trying to put their absolute best foot forward. I enjoyed every single match that graced the ring on this night. Starting right from the first, all the way 
down to the last, which was the um, main event. Sammy Callahan took on the crown jewel champion, Evander James. And Evander James can no longer call himself the crown jewel champion. Sammy Callahan, that absolute beast of a man. Absolute psychotic in the ring. I love everything he brought to the table. Everything he's doing in Impact right now is great. I was a big fan of Jeremiah Crane and all the things he was doing down there in Lucha Underground. I thought he had a lot of leg room to work with in NXT as Solomon Crow. And the fact that he is now associated with House of Glory as more than just one of these guys that come in and have a match and pop the crowd and go away. He is our champion. He is our crown jewel fucking champion. Oh my god, the news of the evening. And absolutely one of the better matches of the night. Full of fantastic matches. Evander James has no reason to hang his head. That was a fantastic performance. And I can't wait to see where this goes. While we're on this topic, I want to give a shout out to my buddy JD. We all know how much I love JD. I wouldn't be sitting here had I not come across him. I would not even know of House of Glory's existence. Most likely, if it were not for him. And last night, last night, my man had a career moment. A career moment in House of Glory. Sammy Callahan, coming off of his win with the Crown Jewel Championship on his shoulder, was brought to the announce team. He was brought to JD to do a nice little interview segment. And my buddy slipped up. You see, we cover WWE mostly on our channels. Uh, That is how we were raised that's predominantly what we talk about on our wrestling channels and on our podcasts so he made a little verbal slip and he called sammy callahan sammy Zayn. at least i that's what i'm pretty sure i heard i could be mistaken it was loud there was shit going on but i'm pretty sure he started the interview calling him sammy Zayn by mistake which triggered Sammy Callahan to assault JD on the stage, screaming at him, what did you call me? And just went into an absolute verbal tirade telling everybody that he is here at House of Glory. He is going to be the crown jewel champion for a long time coming, and I thought it was absolutely great. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because I just have so much respect, and I cannot be any more proud and happy for a guy like JD. That's the end goal, man. You're already there. You're already at the... You have been beat up by a wrestler while doing an interview live at an event. You've made it, bro. You made it. I can only hope to be in that position one day. How, how great is that? Here's a guy that just like me was just a guy, just a passionate wrestling fan. He was frustrated with everything that was going on. He's listening to podcasts left and right and he's like, hey, you know what? I want to let my voice be heard. I want to lend my point of view to the discussion. And now here we are four or five years later and he's involved in the business. He's getting involved in angles. He's one of the top voices in the indies that you're going to hear right now. And and you can't shake that, man. That is just absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to him. I can't imagine what that felt like. I know from what I was seeing, he looked absolutely shook when it was over because nobody can see that coming. It was just a little mistake, and he paid for it. And I'm sure my buddy JD's got some plans in play to try to get back at Sammy Callahan somewhere down the line. And if you need help, bro, you just knock on my door. You know where to find me. I got your back at all times, and we are going to do this no matter what. I cannot wait to see how everything goes down. Congratulations to him. All the best in the world. He continues to rise everywhere that I hope to rise myself to right here on Sledgehammer TV. Let's finally start really getting talking about this show. I dribbled on with you guys long and long enough. I'm, I apologize for that, but here we go. Let's get to the review. The Hollywood Top Models opened up the card Romeo Romano and Sasha Jenkins I like this tag team I like this tag team they come out and they get nothing but heat just based off of the way they look and how they present themselves and the Hollywood's top models is a fantastic pairing add in the uh the ruby element and Romeo being a real piece of shit towards her which really generates heat from the crowd. Sasha doesn't seem to really care too much what's going on as long as he's flexing his pecs and showing his glutes to the world, and that's fine, you know, but (laughs) 
it's a absolutely great team. I think there's big things in store for their future. They were going to take on larger than life. Brian Burgundy and TJ Marconi. However, Brian Burgundy did suffer a concussion after fair warning just a few weeks back, and he was not cleared to wrestle. Who would take his place? Leroy Green, everybody's favorite happy guy. Leroy came out and did the absolute best he could to be TJ's uh, really big partner, but it would be for nothing, as the Hollywood top models would win due in part to Ruby's distractions on the outside and that seemingly wasn't good enough for Romeo as he just absolutely tore her apart as they made their way back to the entrance ramp and out of the arena for the night which led us to a grudge match between Matt Travis how fucking good is Matt Travis Matt Travis has gotten so much better to me on his own since breaking away from cash flow his act is fresh it's new it's awesome i love his look murder by kicks is doing it big and he shocked the house of glory faithful by picking up a win here against cash flow in this grudge match which was an absolutely great match these guys just totally tore into each other it was a very very hard hitting match they were not holding back at all. You could feel the grudge between them, even though they were not right on top of you. It was something to see. Cash flow also, every single time I see him, his performance is just, it's steady, man. It's the same every time. And it's, it's 100% top of the line. It doesn't falter. It doesn't waver. He's just been one of the most consistent performers I've seen. He's done some of the best stuff in ring that you will see at House of Glory. Why he's not being pushed towards the heavyweight championship at some point, I will never know. But you could only, you know, you could only imagine that it's coming because cash flow is everything he says he is. Money, baby. What a fucking great match. Matt Travis, even though he got his head split open... Got the win in this one. A great outing for both guys. We had the women's matchup. We had Sonya Strong, my favorite lady, and the queen of House of Glory taking on the mean queen of fear, Jessica Havoc. Jessica Havoc is awesome. I have never gotten to see her up close. She is a physical specimen to behold. And she's an absolute sweetheart outside the ring. She was fantastic to meet as a person but in the ring she's got this this character the crowd was very pro jessica havoc i think for the first time in house of glory i actually heard chance a uh, chance for the woman that was not sonia strong which is not something that i'm used to hearing in the ring I and mean, i could understand why after seeing miss jessica havoc absolutely the biggest test for Sonya Strong that at least I have seen in House of Glory. Havoc took Sonya to her limit. Jessica Havoc had this match won almost for the entirety of the match. It just seemed as if Sonya was being bested by the bigger and the stronger and the, you know, more veteran competitor between the two. And it showed. And were it not for a lucky roll-up, Sonya Strong would have lost this tremendous winning streak that she has been on over the last year in House of Glory, and that would have absolutely shocked my waves, and I wouldn't have been happy about it, but you have to respect Jessica Havoc. What a tremendous outing again for these two girls. After the win, it would end with some mutual respect between the two competitors and a nice little handshake, which is always refreshing to see, whether it's from the women or the men. I like seeing that. And it was a great match. It was another great outing for Sonya Strong. Another reason to bring to the table why she should be the women's champion of House of Glory. And we will get more into that in just a minute. Montekia versus the Ultimo Dragon. Holy cow. This was a classic Cruiserweight match, an absolute great showing by Monte. Let's just take a look at it, man. If you come coming off of what we saw out of him last month with Jeff Cobb, I actually thought that he had a chance to beat the Ultimo Dragon tonight, or last night rather. 
that would not be the case as the buttery superstar did not have enough margarine-like strength to wiggle his way out of the dragon sleeper as that would ultimately be the fate of Montekia going down to the Ultimo Dragon. And when you do so, sir, you do so with no shame, bro. Think about this sentence. You just wrestled the Ultimo Dragon. How many times as a kid did you watch the Ultimo Dragon lighten it up with Rey Mysterio in WCW? It was one of the highlights of the night when WCW was doing its thing and killing it. Ultimo Dragon was one of those new and, and fresh things that you didn't get to see in the WWE. And you loved him. It was one of your inspirations, obviously. And now you got to sit there and wrestle with him. A legend worldwide. And you kept up with him. Step for step. Much respect to Montekia. Nothing, nothing bad to say in this loss. Dude went toe-to-toe with a living, breathing legend. And one of the most feared superstars in his day to get in the ring against. Because when you got locked up in that dragon sleeper, you got knocked out. Montekia knows that firsthand right now. But that... Absolutely nothing but respect, brother. Uh, an unbelievable showing. Unbelievable matchup. And I can't wait to see who else they're going to throw at Monte. You don't have to win. You don't have to win. You keep putting on performances like we've been getting from you with Jeff Cobb. And especially now with the Ultimo Dragon. Sky's the limit, brother. Sky's the limit. Put your buttery cape on and take off. Awesome. Awesome. We had the House of Gangone. We had Anthony Gangone and Ezekiel Lewis in a tag team match against Private Party. Private Party comes out, gets everybody going as usual. Gangone and crew are absolutely wretched and vicious to the crowd. I stood there proudly in my mask, let the hair flow. One of the proud supporters of the House of Gangone in this moment. This match was very good. All four competitors really put it out there. I love Ezekiel Lewis. I think he's great. I love his look. I don't give a shit that the fans get on him and start calling him No Way Jose. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Embrace it, man. Embrace it, Zeke, because it's great. It sets you apart from everybody. And it's just its so much fun. To see his reactions when the crowd starts chanting it. He's covering his ears. He's getting all stressed out in the middle of the ring. It's a great way to play with the fans. Good heel heat generator. I absolutely love it. And I think his in-ring performance over the course of the last year, he is probably one of the most improved. I don't know whether or not it's because I'm seeing him wrestle on a more consistent basis at the beginning or from what I remember last year when I first started. He was pretty much just one of the outside guys but I'm seeing him a lot more in, in action, and I'm appreciating what he's bringing to the ring. Ezekiel Lewis is fantastic. Anthony Gangone, I can't even say enough about Anthony Gangone. This man is the future of pro wrestling. Why he hasn't been scooped up by now, I'll never know. Maybe his similarities to Seth Rollins is the one reason keeping him out of everything. He's just too damn much like him. And uh, it would be confusing at times, but shit, man. Anthony Gangone is at the top of his game right now. Some of the shit these guys were doing in the ring was fantastic. And Private Party, again, one of the best tag teams on the roster. I say it every single time we do a show about House of Glory. Private Party's fucking fantastic. This match, though, as great as it was, would not be about any of these guys. It would be about the return of the Amazing Red. And absolutely fantastic to see Red back at the House of Glory arena. Last I left him, he was on his back. And by the time I got my car and took a one lap around to see what was going on at the Elks Lodge last month, he was being wheeled into an ambulance and there was not much said. I did not know what was going on and it was so, so relieving to see him there. He came to challenge Anthony Gangone and he got some vengeance on him, attacking him and costing, uh, costing Private Party the match, getting them disqualified. But even more importantly than that, Anthony Gangone would challenge the Amazing Red to a no-ropes match, which is a match that apparently has happened before in House of Glory. I have not 
seen the first one, but it is going to go down again. It was approved by management representative Rob Blatt. And at high intensity 7 on August the 17th, we are going to have a no ropes match featuring the leader and the crazy bastard of the house of Gangone versus one of wrestling's biggest high flyers with nothing to fly off of. So it is going to be a fight and it is going to be something to behold. And I truly anticipate high intensity seven just based off of the announcement of that one match. Absolutely fantastic. We had Violet come out and issue an open challenge once again. At least this time it would be answered. And it was answered by Sonya Strong. Who else would answer this challenge but Sonya Strong? Even after being put through one of the toughest matches of her life, she came out to take that belt off that scrawny little screaming post and get it around the waist of somebody that deserves it. She, the woman beast, tried to intervene and stop this from happening, but Sonya dispatched her with ease, and then referee would call for the bell, and the match would get underway. Sonya looked as if she was ready to go when she would hit the ring again. She, the woman, not she, Sonya. <laughs> and uh, she cost Sonya the match by attacking her and getting Violet disqualified, allowing her to retain this bullshit championship that she's never actually won. This would end up in a two-on-one assault on Sonya Strong, which would prompt Jessica Havoc to make a return to the ring and bail out the Queen of House of Glory. And there was something magical happening here as Jessica Havoc stood face-to-face -face with she. And we couldn't tell which one was bigger. All we wanted was a fight. The crowd got rabid. I was standing there screaming, hitting the steel post as if I didn't even know it was steel with all my might, just screaming, fight, fight, fight. We want to see that one. That is a huge matchup, literally and figuratively, and probably would be fucking awesome. And I would hope that you guys make some sort of plans to get down that road, because that looked like it was money. Did you guys hear the crowd? Because I certainly did. Absolutely fucking great. So I assume maybe at High Intensity 7 we will get a tag match. And we will have Sonya and Jessica Havoc. Maybe against Violet and she. And I'm all for that. I don't care. I love it. I think it'll be friggin' great. Even though I want to see Sonya keep on this solo string of winning and, and building momentum. Leading up to her eventual coronation. Damn it. It'll happen. Mi Morena. It's happening. Don't worry about it. <laughs> While we're talking about the Poriquas, LAX had their open challenge for the Tag Team Championships. LAX, man, Santana and Ortiz light up a House of Glory crowd like no other. Like no other. I was involved... You know, I'm Puerto Rican myself. I got in there. I had the shoulders going. We had the hips swinging. We had the flags waving. It was a big party when LAX came out. Puerto Rican pride at its finest, and it was fucking awesome to be a part of. But then, at least for me, I had to split myself down the middle 50-50. Their open challenge was answered by Juba and Smiley of the House of Gango. I am the biggest Juba fan in the world. I'm a very big supporter of Smiley as well. They are a great tag team in the division that we have going on at House of Glory. And despite their best efforts, and despite the fact that it had to split me right down the middle in my fandom, and I had to put my mask on even though I wanted to dance with my Latin friends, but I had to support the house. At the same time, so I had my mask on and I was still doing my Latin thing. I probably looked a little out of place. It probably looked weird. I don't care. I'm going to support everybody that I love. That's what I do. And despite their best efforts, Juba and Smiley would fall short of getting the Tag Team Championships from LAX. But again, the story in this match is not the match itself. It is in the post-match 
celebration. As LAX would be victorious, they would take to the crowd, opening up the barricades, letting some of the fans come around ringside. Like I said, the flags were flying. We were all dancing to the Spanish music. We had a whole bunch of fans in and around the ring. I was trying to make my way to it, but I just couldn't get outside the barricade. And I said, screw it, I'm going to stay in my seat and enjoy it from here. And I'm glad I did, because by the time I got there, there would have been an assault going on. Where in the middle of this crowd of fans, out of nowhere, come the Masons, who were hiding in plain sight all night long. With Puerto Rican flag bandanas on their face, their hats on backwards, they were standing there in the crowd dancing with everybody, celebrating, doing the whole nine, really selling it. And then they would reveal themselves and attack LAX with that wormy, fat bastard Matthew Ryan Shapiro at the helm, probably constructed this whole thing right from the get-go, and then they would go on a verbal tirade against the Puerto Rican fans, against LAX, telling everybody that they, they hid in plain sight because we were so stupid, and they're coming for the tag team championships and to strip them from LAX. And I want to give props. I want to give props to the Masons for making such a big bold statement. I have said on this show since their coming to House of Glory that I have not been impressed with the Masons. They've done nothing. And I cannot say that no more. The Masons definitely shut me up and they look to be trying to shut up everybody in House of Glory as they got their eyes set on the Tag Team Championships. And it is going to be something to see when LAX finally has a chance to get a measure of revenge on the Masons. Because it's coming, boys. And Shapiro, you better watch out as well, because I'm sure they're gunning for you too, bro. It's going to be fucking great. I thought th by far the absolute best use of the Masons, by far, since they're coming to House of Glory, and I'm anticipating and looking forward to where this story is going. Kudos to you guys that came up with that. Absolutely fantastic storytelling. I love it. Like we talked about at the start, we had the main event, which was for the Crown Jewel Championship, Evander James versus Sammy Callahan. Shapiro was ejected from ringside, which made all the difference in this matchup, and Sammy Callahan was able to wrestle away the Crown Jewel Championship from a very game and a very ready and a very capable Evander James, who I'm sure is looking for a rematch almost immediately. Almost immediately. And House of Glory, temperature rising was absolutely fan-fucking-tastic. And they definitely put the fantastic in fan... Or the fan in fantastic, is what I meant to say. So what? Verbal flub. You guys are used to that by now. I'm, I'm a regular guy. It happens. But <laughs> before we sign off, let's take a look at some of the pictures that I got with some superstars and legends in the world of pro wrestling. Let's go to that screen right now. Let's take a look at it. Look at this. The King of the Mountain... Jeff Jarrett, Tyson Kidd, the last graduate of the Heart Dungeon, and an absolute sweetheart peach of a man. Sammy Callahan, our new champion. This guy was a whole lot of fun. Look at this picture. Who takes pictures like that? We do. Oh, and is this a sign of things to come for the future? The manager and the beast. That's an awesome picture. And the beautiful and talented Jessica Havoc. Nice to have somebody on Sonya's side for once. Coming out to help her out here. And look at this. The piece the resistance with the World Tag Team Champions. The longest reigning. Screw the New Day. And the Ultimo Dragon. I salute you, sir. Absolutely fantastic night of events. This was a one that I will not forget. Maybe ever. I was going to say in a long time, but hopefully never. Some of this other stuff that we came home with, which you saw at the top of the show, autographed Ultimo Dragon Mask. This is a collector's piece. I love this. It might not be the last time you see me wearing this piece on this show. I love the new still photos that they got for the autographs. Let's take a look at a few of them. I got them right here. Check these out. I love these pictures, how you guys had them made up, and you got the nice light clouds at the bottom so that you can get the nice autograph signature there. These are beast. I love these new photo setups that you guys came up with. 
apps I'm showing nobody nothing because it's off screen here idiot look at this Ultimo Dragon absolutely fucking awesome demolition can't go wrong the axe and the smash here they come fucking awesome Sammy Callahan had this cool little ditty and I had him autograph this it's like a comic book you know cover or an old B movie style cover those grindhouse films Awesome. It's got Jessica Havoc on here as well. Over here somewhere. Brian Cage up here. So I thought this was great. I'm an idiot. I should have had Jessica Havoc sign this. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad and happy enough to get the picture. And finally, we are going to end this one with the real crown jewel of the evening. Look at this bad boy. Check this shit out. My TNA. Jeff Jarrett etched guitar look at him man let's try to do this without breaking anything sorry blue here we go look at this signed by the king of the mountain i bought this guitar a couple of years back it was supposed to be autographed but he had left the company by the time i made the purchase now i got it bad ass double j jeff jarrett Hello, my name is Elias. <laughs> I've been dying to do that on this show. Fucking awesome. My TNA, my official TNA guitar. Now autographed by the father of TNA. How can I, how can I top that? How do you follow that? By saying thank you to you guys. Each and every one of you, whether you are part of House of Glory, if you're part of the roster, if you're part of the company, if you're just a fan like me, thank you so much for joining us here at Sledgehammer TV for the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's coverage of all things House of Glory, the premier independent wrestling league in all of the East Coast. I absolutely love it. You guys should love it too. Don't forget to follow them on YouTube as well as subscribe to me here on YouTube so that you will always be on top of the absolute best wrestling coverage on YouTube today, which resides right here at Sledgehammer TV. I cannot thank you guys enough. Do not forget, if you are not a member of the Sledgehammer Club right now, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and then share this video with all of your wrestling friends and all of your wrestling colleagues all over the wrestling world. Get the word out and let everybody know that Sledgehammer TV and the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show is the place to be when you want your wrestling news brought down to your level and we do that with this hammer Thor the wrestling god of thunder and the official sledgehammer of the sledgehammer wrestling show as we do with blue the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world I am Nick Nightmare I love each and every one of you more than you will ever know thank you guys so much for being here that is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time for all things house of glory right here on the sledge hammer wrestling show see you guys on august 17th for high intensity and a wait that's going to be a little too long once again so my intensity is going to be extremely high by the time we get there. Thank you guys once again so much. Have a good night. Sledgehammer Wrestling Show.